I have a question for you. This is off topic. Is yeah. that a cage behind your head? Yeah. What lives in it? Oscar Nunez. Oscar? Hey there, human. With me, Rain Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to Soul Pancake. It's a company I co-created um, and has been a big part of my life for the last 10 years. I was thinking about today about, we have a hard time as a species, I think, living in dichotomies. If I could create a Venn diagram, and maybe I'll try and create a Venn diagram, I'm not really very good at it, but I see a notepad sitting here, and maybe I have a Sharpie, as I have a Sharpie. It would be that this time is equal parts terrifying. I mean, people are dying, and some of the numbers that you read about in little areas like New York or Italy or Spain, uh, it's very scary. We're getting, you know, into the hundreds and thousands of of mortality. So it's not a joking matter at all. It's it's equal parts uh, terrifying, and then it's also equal parts like connected. Like I feel more connected than I have previous, you know, in the months before this, because I'm reaching out more, I'm texting friends, I'm connecting with people online a lot more. I think disconnected is one maybe. And then one more is um, strange funny. So where they all meet up is in the middle, right here. So it's, this is where we're living right now. And this is hard for me and other people to process. Connected, terrifying, disconnected, and strange slash funny. It's kind of funny. There's been a lot of very funny memes going on at the same time. So one of the things I think we struggle with as human beings is living in a dichotomy, living in two things that don't necessarily sync up in a space where we've never lived before. And I think it's okay to allow for the fact that this is terrifying and it's also funny. It's both of those things. If you're being funny, it doesn't mean you're neglecting the terrifying. And if you're being terrified, it doesn't mean you're neglected the funny. And we're getting more connected. Look at this show we're doing right now. Look at how connected we all are. And we're also really disconnected because I can't hug people. We can't go to coffee shops. And we can't drop by and see our neighbors. And we can't go to our church gatherings, you know? And, and there's probably more I could add to this list. But for now, we'll just leave it at these four that we're living here in a very strange time that's between strange, funny, terrifying, connected and disconnected all at the same time. That's how I feel. And isn't that kind of, uh, isn't there kind of a life lesson in there about uh, the fact that life sometimes has all of these dichotomous angles kind of interblending and knocking up into each other Sometimes you're at a funeral and you'll see something that's the funniest thing you've ever seen in your life. You know, sometimes on your, you're at a wedding and you're the saddest you've ever felt in your life. Like this is part of the human experience and we have to accept that and embrace that. But right now we're gonna talk to Ms. Angela Kinsey. And look who's here, can you believe Hi. it? Hey, Ange, how you doing? Hi, buddy, it's so good to see you. Hey, it's great to see you. So. You saw my little Venn diagram that I did, Angela. I did. Terrifying, connected, disconnected, and strange and funny at yes. the same time. And yes. we're here, and sometimes we go in between all of those different feelings and others. Do you have any experiences like that or anything to share on that on this theme? Yeah, I mean, you know, I have three children, and they're 11, 11, and 9. I'm also navigating this through their eyes ah. and, and trying to think about what their world is like. It's hard because I feel like that I'm trying to keep things not scary for them, but also things are scary. That has been kind of interesting because I want to be truthful to them. I want them to know the stakes of what's happening in the world and how we need right. to be responsible. But I also don't want them to live paralyzed by fear. It's, it is it is one of those things, Rain. It's like what you were saying where you can be at a wedding and it's a happy occasion and be sad 
or you can be somewhere where you're supposed to be sad and you and your friend get tickled about something. You know, all those emotions converge. You don't stop having all the feelings you always have. Your environmental like life is changing, but you are still you and you're still trying to process all the information. And some days you're going to be scared and some days you're going to feel triumphant, like you've got this. And other days you're going to laugh because if you don't laugh, you'll cry. I think society kind of tells us what we should be feeling. You know, I've suffered a lot in my past of, from anxiety and depression. Um, something I've started kind of writing about a little bit more, something I want to kind of share more with people because it's such a, a relevant topic today in young people, the, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, epidemic proportions of anxiety and depression that are going on. And I think one of the, there's a myriad causes for this. Uh, but do you know what myriad means, Angela? Are you being condescending? Yes. Well done. There's several, <laughs> there's several things that have led to this for you, Rain. Oh, you're sharp as a tack. I love it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so I think, I think people get confused sometimes because they feel like society tells you what you should be feeling and then you're feeling something different and it doesn't compute and it's right and i think social media doesn't help that i try and stay off of it a lot um personally i post things but i try not to just spend hours surfing on it but right. because i have soul pancake on this ipad i was looking at it a lot and there were people writing poetry and i was like and posting their poetry i was like i should be writing poetry and there were people taking photographs of like birds in the spring. I'm like, yeah, I should be taking photographs of birds in the spring. And there were people like doing crafts. And then there were people working out, people doing yoga and people. And I was this, like, I should if, be doing that. I should be doing that. If that's if, what your social media was full of, I would call you and be like, are you okay? You know that I have an inner hippie in me. I know that you're crunchy. I know you're crunchy. I'm a little crunchy. I'm a very much love power bringing people together yes can we all just get along kumbaya there's a big kumbaya component to the old hey life. i love it i love it I but so i was problem. seeing all this stuff and i was thinking i should be i should be doing all that that felt bad and i was like but you know i'm doing enough i mean i'm doing this show and i'm writing some projects and i'm involved in some other things and soul pancake that's uplifting so i feel like in, in my head, I know I'm doing I'm doing what I need to be doing right now, but then I, I felt really bad. But for me, like one of the stories from my life was that when I got out of acting school and I was a professional actor and I had a beautiful girlfriend, now my wife at the time, and I had a great apartment in Brooklyn, but I was really unhappy. Even though everything that I thought in my head I had always wanted, I had. So it's really been a lifelong journey like why do I feel unhappy even though I have all of these things that I've wanted my whole life? So right. a lot of times society, our, our inner experience doesn't match up to what our externals are. You yeah. know what I mean? A lot of time our dreams feel very big and out of our control. We don't get to make a lot of choices sometimes in our careers. It's other people, the director, the casting director, the producers. And one way I quiet the noise, and I, I, I know this is very simple sounding, but um, I try to sit and be still. Now, and do, you, do you view that as being as different than meditation? Or is it just a less formal form of meditation, just being still? Because totally. isn't that that's a big component of meditation? Yeah. yeah, I just try to sit, you know, I love a back porch. I don't know if it's because I'm Southern, but I love a porch. And I just try to sit on the porch for a few minutes. And I just, in those moments, try to have a, a moment of gratitude. And it can be as simple as, Oh, I'm so thankful that, you know, there's a really nice breeze out today and it feels good going across my face. And I'm thankful for that breeze. I'm thankful that I get to sit here and feel that breeze. And, that's, and that's, that's so wonderful, Angela, the, the finding time to be still. Yeah. And, and finding even tiny, simple moments of gratitude. Um, that's, mm -hmm. that's really, that's really great. Yeah, I think that's that helps me. You are a beautiful human being. Well, I love you so much, Rain. I'll come I back anytime. You. I'll come back. Do you want me to be on your stupid podcast? <laughs> yes, will you be on my stupid podcast with Jenna Fisher? Who? Jenna Fisher. You Does heard it ring me. Doesn't really bell. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I love okay. you. Bye. I love you too. So long. Bye. 
Okay, how was that? What an asshole. Right? See what I had to deal with for almost 10 years? Blah. Remember what we talked about at the beginning? We made this Venn diagram. These are very confusing times. We're connected, terrified, disconnected, and strangely laughing at the same time. That's kind of the space we're living in. I hope we can just own all of these dichotomous, contradictory feeling states and just know that that's totally normal to be feeling lots of different things at the same time and having them swerve and veer from hour to hour. So thanks so much for watching. I love you all. So long. Hey, there you